So what we're going to do is going to go ahead and we're going to start by, there's a bunch of different ways you can program one of these devices. We're going to start by using what's called the Arduino IDE. So if you were programming like an Arduino Uno or a traditional Arduino board, this is how you would do it. Uh, in addition, the PC Arduino allows us to like program in Python and some other things that we're going to look at next. But this first one is just the exact same way you would essentially program an actual Arduino board. So if you click on their start menu equivalent, so down the lower left hand corner here, um, and if you go to programming, there's a thing called the Arduino IDE. If you go ahead and launch that, it'll pop up momentarily. Okay, so once this pops up, it kind of pops up with just a default little program. The way most Arduino programs work is because you're programming like the entire computer now, it has an infinite loop in the center that essentially just gets called over and over again to keep doing whatever you want it to do. So you know, if it's a temperature sensor, this is where you just tell it to read the temperature and it would update every time it runs. Then it also has some setup code. So this gets run once when your program starts. This gets run continuously for the life of the program. Now, there's actually already a whole bunch of nice examples built in here. So we're going to open up one of those. If you go to the file menu, and you go down to examples, you'll notice this first one here says PC Arduino. So this is a special version of the Arduino IDE that's kind of been compiled with all of the PC Arduino stuff already in it. If you just go to the Arduino website and download the Arduino IDE, it's not going to have this PC Arduino stuff in it. Um, you can, the PC Arduino version's on GitHub, so you can get it, but it's a, it's a slightly modified version of the normal, uh, of the normal IDE. So if you go into here, if you go down to linker kits, so that's the linker kits, essentially these accessories, the set of accessories we have. And we're going to start out with the LED test. So if you come down here to linker LED test, it's going to pop open the screen here that has the linker LED test on it. So this is essentially just a really short program that should link the LED for us. Maximize my screen. Um, so it's not. Wait, so the next one we do, Derek, we're going to use Git, and we'll then pull down a copy of it. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it's in the file system. If you want to search for it, it's called Linker LED Test Underscores. Linker Underscores LED Underscore Test. Um, and it's probably so the community. Well, do we need the internet? I'll try to find it. So, in order for this test to work, you're going to need to connect your LED to that board on the top. You can't just plug it into any of those slots. That little board on the top does, in fact, there's some crime to that reason. Uh, if you look at it carefully, you'll notice there's some labeling down underneath the connectors. An LED is essentially a digital device. It has two states, on or off. So what we want to plug this into is one of the digital I.O. ports. So there should be a series of ports that have D's next to them. It's going to like say D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, so on and so forth. You're going to want to plug this into the very edge of the digital port. So it should be the one that says D0 and D1 next to it. Um, it'll, D0 will be the main number kind of in the corner. Um, and it should only fit in in one direction, but if you plug this into the D0, that'll be the di first digital output. That's what this board's going to use. Or it'll actually say D1. I lied. So if you plug this into D1, that'll be the first digital output. It'll be there on the edge of the board. Um, if you plug it into one of the analog outputs, it's, you know, it won't necessarily break. It's just not going to light up because this program is set up to use the digital outputs. All right, so if you guys have that plugged in, if you kind of look at this program, um, um, so if you guys kind of look at this program for a second, we'll see just like before we have this setup section and essentially the bulk of this setup section is gonna, it's saying that if we're running it from within the IDE, uh, it's gonna add this, it's essentially setting up a pin to be an output. That's what's happening right here. You don't need to worry about these print statements. I've done it before. The actual code that's gonna matter to you is down here on the bottom. It's essentially saying, 
set it at high or on for one second, I'm assuming a thousand milliseconds, and then turn it off or on low for a thousand milliseconds. You'll also notice we're including this core.h file. This is where a lot of the kind of commands in here, like this digital write and stuff, is defined. So this should work by default. You'll notice it has LED pin 1. So if you plugged it into one of the other digital ports, you could change this. But if you plugged it into digital port 1, this is already set. If you click the little area arrow here, it should start compiling. And as soon as it's done compiling, it'll start running it. And if you've done everything correctly, your light should now magically blink. Uh, yeah, right on. I know, you're wowed, wowed by your power. <laughs> if your light's not blinking, it probably means you haven't plugged it in the wrong spot. Um, so, if you, when you're done running your program, you'll just need to close the run window here. Hopefully you figured that out. Uh, there are a whole bunch, if you go back to examples, we're not going to get into them right now, but we're going to have some time at the end of the class if you want to play with some of the other ones. You will note there's also an example here for the button, an example for the buzzer, uh, an example for the light sensor, which you can grab one of up here if you want one, an example for the temperature sensor right here. Uh, some of these sensors get plugged into different places on the board, so they're not all digital. Things like a temperature sensor is an analog sensor. It's giving you a voltage output instead of just being on or off. Things like a button is obviously digital. You know, if it has two states, it's probably digital. If it has a continuous set of states, it's probably analog. Um, so buzzers are actually going to be digital because of the way we turn them on and off, uh, even though you can think of a buzzer as having different notes that is really still a digital input. But LEDs, buttons, these are digital. Light sensors, temperature sensors, these are analog. Um, so these we're not going to open up any of these right now. What yeah. we're actually going to do is the same thing in C. So I mean, this is essentially in C, right? But we're going to do it without the IDE. So if you guys go ahead and close your IDE, 